Adolescence Month on behalf of the Workshop Chairs, the Organizing Committee and the Youth Referencing Group. I would also like to welcome our participants who are joining us from our hubs in Malawi, Zimbabwe, Zambia and Mozambique. Thank you so much to all the other organizations that have made it possible for this workshop to be a possibility. The theme of this year's workshop is Building Health and Resilience. This is the first virtual HIV and Adolescence workshop, which means that so many other people will be able to access it from all over the world. The Youth Referencing Group is involved in the workshop planning and in the development of the content for the workshop. There are many young people who will be presenting. There are even two oral abstract presenters that are only 18 years old. There are over 200 young people under the age of 25 years old who have registered for the workshop. Each session is at least co-led by a young person, if not fully led. There will be 10 sessions across the month of November. You can check the workshop calendar for the dates. All sessions are held on, on air except for the skill building sessions which will be held in Zoom. There will also be skill building sessions which will be run by mainly key partners which will be held twice on Friday the 6th of November and the 20th of November. So you will have the opportunity to join two of the five sessions. Please sign up the skill building sessions. You must have received an email and if you haven't, don't worry, you'll also receive a reminder. The poster presentations are available on, on air and you will have time to view them at the end of each session. We have tried to make the sessions as interactive as possible. We encourage you to use the chat box function, share your experiences and questions and get engaged. If you want to talk to one of the delegates, please go to the meeting hub. Most importantly, have fun! Hello everyone, my name is Linda Gale Becker and I'm so delighted to welcome you to this fourth HIV and Adolescence Workshop. Uh, as you know, this year we've gone virtual in 2020 but we still have a program completely packed and designed to bring you the latest and the greatest in terms of HIV and adolescence uh, knowledge, information, and latest research, as well as fantastic engagement with young people as we usually do. We have made some inroads in HIV and adolescence, and that will be very much a feature of the program um, this year. We also will be uh, showing latest abstracts, and I'm delighted that this year we've had 117 total ab abstracts accepted, 23 orals and 94 posters. Also, I'm I'm as delighted that really the reviewers remarked about how quality has continued to improve year on year. And this means that we're doing more work in adolescence, more important work and work that is worthy of, uh, of dissemination. I think uh, the, the excellence we're starting to see also is playing out in terms of better programming. So this year we will award a prize of free registration to, to next year, 2021's uh, workshop, and that will be for the best oral abstract and the best poster. So look out for that during the next couple of weeks. So most of all, I think what will come home in this workshop is the need to integrate and provide differentiated care for adolescents. We know that sexual reproductive health issues as well as mental health issues are key to their well-being. And you will see some excellent work uh, demonstrated at the workshop. Of course, we have all been impacted by COVID-19. And in addition, we bring to this workshop this year, the intersection of HIV, COVID-19, and how we've been able uh, in many cases with best practices to continue to provide uh, the best of adolescent programming despite the challenges. When I think about my wish for young people in terms of the HIV epidemic in the world at large, as we go forward, is that increasingly we will engage young people to understand what is the best kind of programming for them. And, and that engagement will be real and it will be meaningful 
and it will be authentic. Um, so may we continue to do that. It's absolutely important that we keep adolescence on our agenda. We cannot talk about ending the AIDS epidemic or moving towards control of the HIV epidemic unless we address the question of adolescence around the world. And it's a wonderful opportunity because if we do that, we will be investing in the triple dividend, adolescent health today, adult health in the future, and of course, the next generation's well-being as well. This workshop seeks to bring all the stakeholders into one room. And of course, that is critical because we cannot solve these big challenges unless we bring an intersectoral and multi-stakeholder approach. And so again, thank you for joining us at the HIV Adolescence Workshop. We hope you have a wonderful workshop uh, and we look forward to the dialogues we'll be having together. It's such a privilege to be able to say a few words about HIV and adolescence during this session, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be able to do so. The timing of this series of virtual workshops could not have been at a better time. The world is a very confusing and distracted place at the moment, and it's important that we do not allow any gains, particularly in the fight against HIV, to take a backseat amongst all this distraction. As we deliberate on these important issues today, the world today also awaits and wonders about the outcome of one of the most consequential elections in recent memory. Leadership does matter. And in times of pandemic, leadership matters even more. We are also reminded that pandemics are political and that politics matter. While every country grapples with the global impact of COVID-19, we also grapple with the reality that pandemics are not only reoccurring, they also follow the structural fault lines within our societies. Said differently, whatever we hadn't fixed before COVID is exacerbated by COVID. This is particularly true in relation to the HIV response. In the world before COVID, the fight against HIV was enjoying remarkable gains, but within the celebration of these gains, there were also serious concerns about key populations as well as pediatric and adolescent HIV. In the world of COVID, where we know that pandemics follow fault lines, we are justified in being concerned about how the pandemic will impact the HIV response and how it will exacerbate the areas which were already of concern. Pediatric and adolescent HIV numbers were not giving us comfort before COVID. And if there was a time to refocus on this particular area, it is now. It also supports my worldview that if you want to solve a problem, look at it through the lens of children. If we resolve pediatric and adolescent HIV, we've gone a long way in forging a path towards the HIV-free free generation as envisaged by the Start Free, Stay Free, AIDS Free framework. It's unacceptable that adolescence is the only age group in which AIDS-related deaths are increasing. It's unacceptable that in Eastern and Southern Africa, one in four women aged 20 to 24 years gives birth before the age of 18 years, and 30% of all new HIV infections occur amongst adolescent girls and young women aged 15 to 24 years. This is a crisis in and of itself and threatens to undo the very real gains in the global HIV response. When it comes to the complexity of adolescent needs, HIV is not a standalone topic. Adolescents deal with HIV. At the same time, they need to deal with issues of mental health, substance abuse, relationships, sex, parents, school, cultural and traditional norms within the context of the 21st century, financial insecurity, and all the other issues young people are focused on. Sexual transmission and injection drug use continues to be the main modes of transmission among adolescents who are not infected as infants. The same way we understand the need for multi-sectoral approach in the HIV response is the same way we understand that young people are not defined by HIV. You have so many other concerns and it is incumbent on all of us to reflect on the social and economic drivers of HIV. 
I remember as a young black African girl, my parents' main concern that I would contract HIV or fall pregnant. Adolescent girls and young women should not be viewed through the lens of risk. They should be viewed through the lens of opportunity. Those opportunities are best unlocked when we listen to the views of adolescent girls and young women, their suggestions, and amplify their voices. And I'm pleased that this workshop seeks to define itself through the listening to and amplifying of the powerful voices of young people. I love the idea of using COVID to reimagine a new normal where a multi-sectoral approach that addresses social and economic inequalities is the norm. This would, be, this would include reimagining how a stronger HIV response, which places adolescents and mothers at the center of what it means to be fair and inclusive. A stronger HIV response with a targeted approach for the most vulnerable adolescents, reimagining a stronger HIV response that focuses on adolescent-friendly access to testing, treatment, and counseling, and thinking about all the other multi-sectoral issues. While we reflect on the triple epidemics faced by women, which is HIV, COVID, and gender-based violence, we undoubtedly can reflect on how these three challenges intersect and how we can combine learnings to fight all three as they do feed off each other. As we watch how COVID re-emerges in the much dreaded second wave, we have to reflect on how the nature of a second wave is based on what we didn't do. What we don't act on will always come back to haunt us in worse numbers. The future of the HIV response is based on what we don't do now. If we don't act now on the elimination of vertical transmission of HIV, it will haunt us. If we don't act now on adolescent sexual transmission and injection drug use, it will haunt us. If we don't act now on gender-based violence, where adolescent girls are exposed to sexual violence or relationships where they lack the agency to negotiate their sexual health and protection, it will haunt us. COVID doesn't reduce the urgency to act. It increases it. We can't afford to be distracted as every single day matters. Have a fantastic workshop and would have loved to be with you, but in this virtual world, it is what it is. So hopefully we'll see each other next year. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you. I wish to congratulate Virology Education for the work that you have put into this pivot to a virtual event in these challenging times. And I am honored to be representing UNAIDS leadership and to speak to the critical importance of maintaining a focus on and for adolescents in the global HIV response, especially in the regions of the world with the highest burden of adolescent HIV. Why is it important? In the Eastern and Southern Africa region, adolescent girls and young women account for 28% of all new HIV infections, yet they only form 10% of the adult population. Looked at another way, this is equivalent to 3,600 3, new HIV infections every week. And this rate in girls is more than double the rate of boys and young men of the similar age who themselves are acquiring HIV at a rate of 1,400 every week. This is unacceptable. Further, Sub-Saharan Africa is home to almost 80% of the adolescents living with HIV globally. So in 2020, in a year when many more of our countries have achieved the 1990-90 targets, fast track targets towards the end of HIV as a public health threat in the year 2030, we are noting that young people are still underserved by HIV services. In far too many countries, there are still policies and legal barriers related, for example, to the age of consent that continue to limit access of young people to appropriate information, to HIV testing, and to sexual health services. 
So we note that only about a third of adolescent girls and young women between the ages of 15 and 24 years in the world's most affected regions and the countries that report to HIV have comprehensive knowledge about HIV. How can we expect them to protect themselves against an enemy that they do not know about? We also note that condom use among young people has decreased in many countries and falls way short of targets that are necessary for impact. Adolescents living with HIV are still more likely to be lost to follow up, to adhere less well to their medicines and to have poorer treatment outcomes than adults. Even as the world records significant achievements in the area of access to effective HIV treatment and um, in the area of achieving sustained viral load suppression in the most affected communities. So we need to recognize young people's special needs for comprehensive care, and that this includes psychosocial, psychosocial support, as well as a range of sexual and reproductive health services. Our collective challenge, therefore, is to make the HIV response work for all young people. And this is why ensuring that young people are empowered to protect themselves from HIV, ensuring that they have access to prevention and to effective care and treatment remains a key area in the renewed global AIDS strategy that UNAIDS is currently working on. Decades of experience in the HIV response have shown us that when affected communities can fully participate in decision-making and fully participate in designing and monitoring interventions, that service delivery improves, HIV outcomes improve, and overall impact improves. And it's in this spirit that UNAIDS will continue to promote, to actively promote the engagement of young people in the HIV response. And we have already started to do this. We will, we continue to invite young people to the table, to the decision-making table. We continue to listen to young people articulating their specific needs um, for the HIV response. And together we will work to ensure that AIDS becomes less of a threat to public health by the year 2030. Asian and Pacific, it's a region that holds over 60% of the world youth population. In 2018, it, there were estimation of 110,000 cases of children who are living with HIV of the age of 14 and below. And in the same year as well, we see that there is 12,000 new HIV infection among those who are 14 years old and below, and 26% of the new HIV cases in Asian and Pacific are happening between, uh, sorry, in young people between the age of 15 to 24. As scary as the data sound, I am optimistic of young people in Asian and Pacific because of how creative they are. To name a few, in Indonesia, the Lollipop program aims to increase the testing, treatment and also adherence so that they can reduce the HIV rate among the young population. While in Malaysia, the PEA project aims to use artistic approach, you know, to allow the young PL HIV to have an enabling environment to express themselves and also to highlight the importance of early testing and also early initiation of medication. And in Vietnam, the Lighthouse Enterprise shows that, you know, when you've led organizations are uh, empowered and also sustainable, they can be a part of the national HIV response. And one of their massive achievements is the K equal to K, which highlight the importance of U equal to U. And there are more to be named. Well, I am definitely full of hope of young people in Asia and Pacific because I know we can be and we are the change maker in HIV response and we can you know with the advancement of the technology we can think of something and a lot of stuff to strengthen the HIV response in our country.
Botswana, better known by my artist name, Abby Chams, and I'm from Tanzania. I'm 17 years old and I'm a musician, a singer, songwriter, as well as a pianist, a guitarist, and a violinist. And I'm also the founder of Teen Talks with Abby Chams, a program for the youth that addresses different issues we face and we discuss ways we can overcome those different issues. And I'm also the founder, sorry, <laughs> the founder of Abby Chan School of Music, which is a educational, musical education program, basically, here in Tanzania. And it is an honor to be with you all today. You raise me up to Social media is an opportunity for change, for inspiration, a center for creativity, to spread positivity instead of negativity, love instead of hate, and to build instead of tear down. My wish for the future of young people is to seize this opportunity that social media is. We are delighted to note that uh, over the last one year, in terms of the adolescent programming, uh, we have seen a number of changes, especially in light of uh, policy. We've seen uh, changes relating to the age of consent for testing in a number of countries. We have equally seen that a number of countries have introduced uh, a national adolescent uh, uh, sexual and reproductive health policies that are enabling as well as a number of di differentiated programs uh, targeting the adolescents. With this, we've also noted at the global level, the development of a service delivery framework uh, for uh, pediatrics and adolescents that uh, are contributing to a number of interventions that we are seeing um, in our countries, including um, best practices around the decentralized treatment. We've seen task shifting for treatment for adolescents. We've seen more use of uh, mobile phone case management uh, additionally, we are seeing the community-based treatments coming in very handy for our adolescents. Uh, we've seen programs using adolescent transition as well as integrating care for mental health and substance abuse disorders for adolescents. And more importantly, especially for this time, we've also noted a lot of presence of online social network support for young people. Uh, during this conference or our workshop, we are also uh, appreciating the multidisciplinary approach that has brought together a rich representation of adolescents and young persons, um, both seasoned as well as young researchers, uh, program managers, and implementers. We've seen a lot of contribution by the academia, but more importantly also, this time round, we are seeing a lot of uh, service providers bringing in the wealth of their experiences from the field, and all these also are contributing to the policy uh, at national, regional, and global uh, levels. This multidisciplinary approach allows us to translate the lessons we are learning, experiences that we are sharing that we believe will trickle down and inform adolescents and, and youth programming, as well as po uh, policy formulation. Again, it is also important for us just to reiterate that each of the stakeholders that are participating in this workshop are bringing in their unique diversities in improving the outcomes for the adolescents and bringing new perspectives that help us move the agenda of adolescents forward. Lastly, it is also our acknowledgement that we are learning as we are doing, and therefore that is important in terms of engaging at the very grassroots, the healthcare providers and implementers, but also including our governments and policymakers in this workshop. Thank you very much.
Dear distinguished delegates, in collaboration with UNICEF, we will share a summary at the end of each week with the highlights including links to presentations on the Virology Education website. Please do share the wealth of resources of the latest evidence on adolescent HIV with your networks. As promised last year, and of course due to COVID-19, the feedback surveys are now online. You will be given this at the end of each session. Kindly also do remember to engage on social media. In the closing, we will share the most like posted and the most creative photo. Don't forget to use the hashtag HIV Adolescence and hashtag Young in Action. Also, don't forget to tag Virology Education. Take a selfie now and post it on social media. Feel free to ask any questions you want. And also to start us off with the interaction, type in the chat box what you hope to gain from the workshop during this workshop period. Special thanks to the workshop sponsors, Viv, Gillette, and Mylan for their generous, generous support. We also wish to thank all our endorsers for actively promoting the workshop. We honestly wouldn't have done this without you. We really, really thank you. Please do have a wonderful HIV and Adolescent Workshop Month. Thank you and welcome. Do enjoy.